So, um, this one's gonna be about stoicism. I know I probably pronounced it just wrongly. Stoicism. I don't know. Uh, this book is actually called The Guide to the Good Life. I think I haven't gone through it yet, so therefore we are going through it. Yeah. I hope at least. I really fucking hope. You know, if I haven't, or if I have gone through it already, I think it's it's even not that bad, you know, because I don't remember anything, therefore everything is quite good. But I assume that I haven't. I really do. But yeah, with that being said, hello, welcome back to the next episode of the Self-Development with Tactics podcast. Uh, I'm pretty fucking pumped to be here, you know. I actually, today I thought like, you know, I do only make, I do only want to make one video. And now I'm sitting here, which is the second video that I'm recording today. <laughs> like, you know, it is so like, well, you know, I do not have to do to, to do anything, actually. I don't want to just do something that somehow makes sense. This is something that somehow makes sense, and therefore I'm just doing it. It is quite, well, it is quite interesting, I would say. And you can't see again what I'm even talking about. And therefore, you have this one. Um, this summary is from the paulminers.com website. Um, unfortunately, I've been mixing up the paulminers.com website and the jamesclear.com website, which means that I've always, always said like, okay, you know, on the James Clear website, there's also just so great summaries, even though there have never been summaries, I guess, at least. Um, I guess maybe there are. I, I'm, I'm really not sure at the time. I'm really not. But yeah, we're going through a guide to the good life from this man here. I don't know. Uh, from William, William, uh, Arvin, Arvin, Arvine, whatever, you know, this is by him. And um, this book, because I just had a quick look at it, a quick, I had a quick look at it. Yeah, I had a quick look at it. Um, this book is just somehow implemented in stoicism or stoicism or whatsoever. Therefore, um, yeah, we will probably see something of that, which is definitely good because I pretty much like this philosophy. I, I, I really like it. I don't know, like, yeah, I could really quite like it. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna start reading. Yeah, I think I'll do. So a guide, a guide to the good life is an eye-opening read about how to live a happier and more meaningful life. The book challenges you to think about living, living life as an art, living life as an art. This just somehow reminds me of Seth Godin, because he always talks about people who do something, like me, who just uh, are creating something as artists, and or that you should maybe also consider yourself an artist, and think about that a little bit more as an artist would maybe. Um, the thing is, well, yeah, the thing is, yeah, I should really somehow consider myself more as an artist. I think it just really, you really just think differently about what you're doing uh, not in terms of, you know, the management aspect, but just really in terms of what you're doing at this certain moment. Like, I'm recording a video right now. This is somehow my art, if you want to consider that, or if I want to consider that, actually. Um, still, I can somehow treat it like my art, you know, and just actually get my personality more into it and just, just treat it like I, always, like I also treat graphic design or when I'm drawing something. It's just really... Of course, you know, there's just going to be some personality of mine uh, in this certain thing that I'm producing. And I totally think in this video that you can also see my personality to some degree, at least. You know, besides the fact that I'm staring in the video or that I am in the video. Uh, but yeah, I think you also can totally feel when, uh, when, when somebody else just edited a video or when somebody else... Um, well, yeah when the video is from somebody but not me, for example. So, yeah. Um, so, the art of living is a skill to be practiced, rather than misliving and failing to acquire the happiness you want. William Irvine, Irvine has curated the perfect guide to the good life that is well worth a read. And therefore, we are reading the summary. <laughs> no, you know, I do always have to say that if a summary... You know, it is pretty good if you just feel like, okay, this summary is just really fucking well. Then I would totally suggest you to get the book and just read the book because the experience is totally something different. 
you know, something that I have seen um, when I was reading How to Win Friends and Influence People, it just really hit me. You know, it just really was one of the books that I think is, is always going to stay in my mind as one of the books that was the greatest ones or as actually one of the books that are staying in my mind somehow. Um, but, but on the other hand, as I was reading uh, as a summary from how to, how to Win Friends and Influence People, it was something completely different. You know, the whole experience is really different. It is just, I, I, th I thought like, or I found also like that the experience of reading a summary is not as near as good as reading the whole book. And I do feel like, and, and think like that um, this might not only be the case for How to Win Friends and Influence People. C quite obviously, maybe. <laughs> But yeah, so who is this book for? This book is written for those seeking a philosophy of life. The Stoic philosophy principles may be old, but they merit the attention of any modern individual who wishes to have a life that is both meaningful and fulfilling, who wishes that is, who wishes that is to have a good life. Well, yeah, and I can also say it like this. It could also just be about having a good life. About the author, William B. Arwine, or William B. Arwine, is a professor of philosophy at, at Wright State University, the author of seven books, including A Guide to the Good Life, and he is a contributor for the Huffington Post, Seven Time, and the BBC. He lives in Dayton, Ohio. I think it's Dayton. It's D A Y T O N. So I guess it is Dayton. In the summary, a Guide to the Good Life is an eye-opening read about how to live a happier and more f meaningful life. The book challenges you to think about living as an artist or living as an art. The art of living is a skill to be practiced rather than misliving and failing to acquire the happiness you want. William Irwine has created the perfect guide to the good life that is worth or well worth a read. Which is again like the same introduction as we had before, but yeah, still. The book summary. The Rise of Stoicism. Um, the, the funny thing is, Tim Ferriss, um, in one of his TED Talks that I've also been reacting to, funny thing, I've only been reacting to one video, and this is this one singular video that I was reacting to. It was uh, one of Tim Ferriss' uh, TED Talks, because he has multiple ones, even though I, I was saying in a video, like, you know, I'm reacting to the uh, Tim Ferriss' TED Talk, you know, even though I think there are two or three or maybe even more, but I think he totally deserves it, like he's an incredible person, at my point of view at least. Um, but still he was also talking about Stoicism or Stoicism in, uh, in this particular TED Talk, and it was quite interesting because he was talking about how this word actually, you know, got the word it is, because this actually somehow, I don't know the vocabulary or the exact word, but it somehow has something to do with a part of a house. It might be just, you know, the front yard of a house, just, you know, a another word for that. But I don't know. I don't remember, unfortunately. Um, the thing is, yeah, uh, it has something to do with houses somehow. And he was also talking about it and also about a guy that um, actually is pretty well into Stoicism or Stoicism. Um, well, yeah. So the rise of Stoicism or Stoicism. Although Iowine is advocating, is advocating Stoicism, it isn't the only option available for those seeking a philosophy in life. Iowine, or Arwine highly suggests that we all find a philosophy to follow in our daily lives. Uh, I totally believe that there are just more than Stoicism. Uh, I still believe that Stoicism... I, I'm gonna say Stoicism. I'm going to say Stoicism, I guess this is right, probably it is the other one, but I don't give a fuck. So um, I totally think that there is something else than Stoicism, but I believe that Stoicism is actually one of the I know, oldest ones, or the most popular ones as well. Um, therefore, just, you know, there might be a lot of resources on Stoicism, which just makes it way easier to, um, well, implement it into your life, because you just have more information and just can just see what other people are doing in this space rather than just maybe having your own philosophy where you're the only one and therefore there's no resources um, besides the one you provide. Um, but yeah, I think you get the point that I'm willing to make. Um, what is Stoicism in a nutshell? The goal of Stoicism is freedom from passion or pathos in ancient Greek, meaning anguish or suffering through the pursuit of, re uh, for the pursuit of reason and apathy or uh, apathia in ancient Greek. Greek, sorry. 
meaning, being objective, unemotional and having clear judgment. It teaches indifference towards external events as in nothing external could be either good or evil and e equanimity in life's highs and lows. For the Stoics, becoming a clear, unbiased and self-disciplined thinker allows one to understand the natural universal, re universal reason in all things, or logos in ancient Greek. Well-known Stoics, Stoics include the Greek founder of the philosophy Zeno, or Zeno, 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 whatever, who lived from 333 to 261 BZ, and Ep Ep Epictetus, I always just have problems with pronouncing his name, obviously, um, Epictetus, or Epictetus, um, who has actually also written the book, let me remember, just a bunch of philosophy books, and they all are pretty great, and you can all find them on the um, samuelthomasdavis.com website. Um, I would like to say that I'm going to link that down in the description, but I know just myself, and I, I wouldn't, I guess, um, but I'm totally going to just link this certain book summary into the uh, description that I've also not done with the other video that I've recorded today. The other video from today is actually about um, health and losing weight and gaining weight and building muscle and all these good things. Um, and quite, uh, quite a big part of it is about myths because I'm going through the uh, bigger, leaner and stronger thing uh, and or book from... Uh, uh, Matthew is his, na is his last name. I do not remember his first name. I'm sorry. Um, but well. So, Epi Epictetus or Epictetus and Roman Seneca. Um, Epictetus lived from 55 to 135 AD, which is something that I don't know what AD means. Let's see what AD means. Advertising. No, thanks. I didn't want to see what advertising is. Um, well, and then Romans Senec Seneca, or Seneca, or Sinusa, whatever, from uh, 4 BC to 65 AD. 60, yeah, 65. <laughs> and Musonius Rufus, uh, 20 to 30, or between 20 and 30 to 101 AD. And Marcus Aurelius, who was the uh, um, Roman emperor, um, pretty famous, I guess, you know, a lot of people should know him or do know him, uh, who was living from 121 to 180 AD. So for Ep Epictetus, the primary concern of his philosophy was the art of living. Just as a wood, just as wood is the medium of, this, of the carpenter and bronze is the medium of the sculptor, your life is the medium on which you practice the art of living. It actually is. So Marcus Aurelius, emperor of Rome, began each day by telling himself, today I shall be meeting with uh, interference or interference, interfer interference, uh, ingratitude, insolence, disloyalty, ill will and selfishness, all of them due to the offender's ignorance of what is good or evil. So let's explore the philosophy, techniques and applications of Stoicism in our modern lives. And there's actually just a lot of things that we can use from the Stoics um, to, to implement in our lives. Um, as I've just went through the little book of Stoicism, which is actually one of the best videos that I've ever recorded, made, whatever. Um, so it performed the best. I don't know if it is the best, probably actually not, but I got the most clicks and I think also view time. But I don't know. I don't know. You know, I'm not living in my analytics and I think nobody should because you would just really um, fuck yourself. You know, you would just really kind of kill yourself if you would only kind of have a look at all your analytics all fucking day long. Um, I don't know. I just think that this wouldn't be the best thing to do somehow, some sort of. Yeah. I think a lot of people would relate to that and I, I think a lot of people would say so as well um, just because, you know, always having a look at your analytics and always having a look at, you know, how your videos are doing or how the podcast or whatever you're producing is doing. Well, um, you know, I think, first of all, we are quite obsessed with having the data of it. You know, pretty seldom we're actually using it to, to create things that might just be better than the things that we have done. 
which might also be the exact, exact, exact same thing for me, um, I might have a lot of data. I, I guess so, you know, I have data from Instagram, from Twitter, from Facebook, all of these platforms and also data from YouTube uh, as well as well um, as from Anchor, you know, the podcast site that I'm using for publishing and distributing the podcast and are actually kind of, well, not actually making, well, it is only about the distribution of it. Um, I do also have data from them. I do just have a bunch of data. You know, the thing is, well, you know, the data is not that good especially because nobody's watching anything that I'm producing or listening to anything that I'm producing. Um, so, well, yeah, I think I'll just go on. I think I'll just go on with stoic uh, psychological techniques. Stoic psychological techniques, uh, negative visualization. We often contemplate the bad things that could happen to us. However, no matter how hard we try, we cannot prevent all of them from happening which is definitely the case. Seneca points out that contemplating the bad things that could happen to us will lessen their impact when they happen. You know, you know I do just have to think about it in two ways. The first, the first way is definitely he is right, you know, because the thing is, okay, if you just know like, well, somebody's gonna die, you know, something is gonna happen, some things, well, this and that, you know, so many various things that could happen, the thing is, it is right, you know, if you're constantly thinking about it, if you're just trying to to also find, on the other hand, also the gratefulness uh, that it is not the case at the time, which is something that I'm also seeing there, um, which is good, which is totally good and fine, um, then of course, you know, if this then happens, you're not going to be as fucked because you knew, okay, it is going to happen or chances are always there that this is going to happen. So first of all, this one, so that's, okay, it makes sense what he's saying and also just showing the gratitude that it is not the case now. Um, well, yeah. Um, on the other hand, I do also I do just have to say, you know, if you're constantly thinking and then focusing on the negative shit in the world, well, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to be happy. I don't know if you're going to just feel good if you're just constantly surrounding yourself with quite negative activity even though you know it just really depends on how he just implemented it and how bad he was thinking about it you know if, if he was thinking about it all day long every single moment uh, well you know it's just a wonder that he wasn't just fucking unhappy you know just surrounding himself all day long with unhappiness and the negativity and things that can happen of course somehow this can fuck you but well yeah let's see the next one exercising gratefulness well, 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 well. So we are often unhappy because we are in insatiable, insatiable, and in insatiable, unsatisfied. It is not, but I might be the same exact thing. Yeah, well, somehow it is actually the same thing. Um, we work hard to get what we want, but then when we lose interest in the object of our desire, becoming bored and forming new, grander or grander desires. The key to happiness for historics is to prevent ourselves from taking the granted or the granted the things we worked so hard to get. Uh, that could include our family, our loved ones, our house or well-being and our job. The stoics spend time imagining they, that they have lost the things they value. This way they exercise gratefulness and value the things they have seen more. Actually a pretty nice thing. The funny thing is that uh, Gary V himself is also doing the exact same thing. He often talks about he is just thinking about losing everything. Everything. Uh, especially also his parents and things that are just uh, things and also just you know people that are very, very important for him. He thinks about these things. You know, more about people than about things. Um, he thinks about it. He really does. And, and I found that just... I found and find that pretty amazing and then pretty insane on another hand as well. But I think it's just great. You know, we all should be just way more just grateful and happy for what we're having just because we have so much, you know, especially when you're living in a first world country. Um, as I've been talking about it just way too often, maybe we should all be just way more satisfied with what we're having just because we have so much. We have so much other people just will never have in their fucking life. You know, I'm just sitting in my own room 
uh, which is clean, it's not dirty, it smells relatively good, besides my fucking farts. <laughs> and, and everything is nice. I do have food, I have water, I do just can't buy literally anything that I somehow need. It's not about wanting that I need. Well, you know, there's literally nothing to complain about, just from my side. Um, besides the whole, you know, self kind of, uh, the, the, the purpose thing and just having purpose in life, you know, this is something that I, sh that I struggle with or that I, that I can struggle with just because, you know, if you have a look at the uh, Maslow's pyramid of needs, then you know what I'm talking about, you know, because the really kind of low uh, steps of the pyramid obviously are just food and water and sex and, you know, various kind of things that we just need from a physical perspective as well, um, and on the really top top edge of the um, of the uh, pyramid, you can find something like uh, satisfactory uh, or satisfaction, actually self satisfaction. Then just having purpose in life. Then just well, those things. But yeah, external and internal change. So the external and the internal. Change the most important question in our life, according to Epictetus. Whatever, I give a fuck about it. Um, whether to concern ourselves with things external to us or things internal. While most people say contentment, or whatever this is, let's actually see. Um, satisfaction, well, and try to avoid harm from external things. Uh, Epictetus believed for all benefits and harm to come from himself. That is, instead of changing the world around us, Epictetus or Epictetus advises us to seek contentment by changing ourselves and our own desires, uh, which is like something that is pretty common, I think, in the self-development and self-help space. That people say, like, okay, you know, it is not about the external shit; it is about how you think about things, which is actually true. You know, which is really true. You know. Um, if something bad is happening, nothing bad is happening unless you think about it as it being bad. If you think about it being good, it is not just something that is bad. It is something that is good just because you think it is good. But because you have the worldview of it being good, you know, good things and bad things, obviously, are just something, uh, well, completely different for certain cultures, for certain people. Um... In the desert, having rain probably is just the best thing that can happen. You know, here in Europe or uh, where no just uh, no no desert is, having rain will fuck with a lot of people because they think like think like well, it is bad weather. You know, um, so yeah. First of all, this. Second of all, that. Okay, um, just tell, just somehow also having perspective. Like you know, the weather thing that I'm always bringing up is like okay, you know, if it's bad weather. Uh, rather than thinking like, you know, it is bad weather, uh, everything is so fucked. Uh, thinking like, well, you know, now I do just have the time to read my fucking book that I always had to read or I always wanted to read for such a long time. Well, there's there's always two sides. Always. Uh, but yeah, um, this is going to be the end of the video, I guess. I don't know, you know, I do not want to stretch myself uh, kind of unnecessarily making the, the video and or the whole kind of feeling of me making the video and uh, you watching the video bad by just forcing myself to do something. Therefore, uh, yeah, this is the end of the video. I hope you the best health, wealth, happiness and or actually wish you the health, the best health, wealth, happiness and also success. And I also hope that you're going to remind yourself on how you're going to be remembered. So basically your legacy. Um, yeah, you have it in your control, but we can't serve everyone. You know, not everyone's going to like us. Not everyone's going to love us. It is just what it is. I guess it is just the default of human beings that, you know, we don't like everyone. But yeah, um, i see you next. i see you next. i see you soon, uh, maybe in the next video as well. Maybe I wanted to say this. Um, but until then, I wish you the best and I'll see you. Thank you.